What's up DC Squad, Brad the DC Universe Geek here, and on this channel I cover DC news, shows, comic books, toys, whichever I feel like covering, that's DC. And today is going to be all about the things that I was the most excited about that I saw at New York Toy Fair 2018. So for me as a DC fan, the big three are New York Toy Fair, New York Comic Con, and San Diego Comic Con. Those are the three major events that I watch like a hawk because I want to see what's going to be revealed. And in this case, there were some pretty cool reveals. In other areas, I think we were left kind of wanting. There were certain things that we were hoping to see, and they just didn't bring out for us to see, or possibly don't even exist yet. So first, let's talk about NECA, and the lack of there actually being any DC versus Aliens figures brought out again. That's the kind of thing that I think we all would have really loved to see, as a reassurance that it's not dead, that yes, it's up in limbo, but it's not dead, we are still very interested, but because the license, I guess, seems to be up in limbo as far as the story goes, they probably didn't even feel comfortable bringing the figures out, which doesn't sit well with me, it doesn't bode well, and I think I'm just going to be another voice in a tidal wave of voices that say, you know, come on NECA, let's, let's get the ball rolling, let's get these things out because you could sell these things for like 45 bucks a two-pack set all day long like hotcakes. Now DC Collectibles trailed out some stuff that had fans pretty darn excited. There were a few bits and pieces here that had us a little bit confused, and I'll get into that in a second. But the first thing that they brought up, the first thing that I saw online was actually a line of Doomsday Clock figures. For those of you who don't know, the Doomsday Clock is kind of like a follow-up to Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons' The Watchmen series. It was a 12-issue series that they brought out in the 80s. It was wonderful. It's still one of the best graphic novels. If you haven't read it yet, I really seriously suggest you pick up even a paperback copy of The Watchmen. One of the best reads ever. Well, the Doomsday Clock is actually co-created by Jeff Johns and artist Gary Frank. It revisits some old characters and some new faces. It's a wonderful read, and I'm on issue 3 right now, and I love it. I can't wait to see where they go with it. If it's even half as good as the original Watchmen, it's going to be amazing. Now, the figures that they showed us at Toy Fair are actually some of the classics. Rorschach, Dr. Manhattan, Ozzy Mendes, and the Comedian, and they all look fabulous. But with the introduction of the Mime and Marionette into the Watchmen universe, they're actually going to give us a figure of each of those as well, which is kind of cool because they're interesting characters, and you can tell they're not just fodder. They're going to be more permanent additions to the Watchmen universe, and they probably play a really big part in the entire story overall. So they brought those figures out for us to see, and I'm really excited about that. But not only that, they showed us some DC Essentials, and this is another thing that has fans incredibly excited and a little bit confused. Now the first glimpse that we caught of the DC Essentials line, they showed us Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Green Lantern, Nightwing, Deathstroke, and Aquaman, and the buzz was pretty good. A lot of fans were pretty excited about what they saw. There were a lot of fans who were like, they're taking over for the DC icons, and I want my DC icons, and I was, I'm part of that. I, I wish the DC icons could have at least saw the release of all the rest of their figures, but the DC Essentials is taking their place, and they do look fabulous and they look like they are articulated to the nines. Neck hinge, lots of ankle articulation, and all kinds of articulation everywhere else. The color scheme on these seems to be solid, as well as the character choice. Now this time they actually showed some different figures. They didn't bring out the Wonder Woman, or the Green Lantern, or the Nightwing. They just stayed behind the curtains. However, they did bring out Black Manta, Reverse Flash, and Brainiac. Oh yes, Brainiac. Now where it gets a little bit confusing is there have been a few changes. Now some of the other things that we saw that were different was A, the Batman figure actually has a completely different neck piece. The original one they showed us had the cape kind of end right here and it was the sculpted neck that popped up through and then the head was on the hinge slash ball joint and a lot of fans are like, that's ugly. I was one of the people that said, yeah, I like the figure, it looks great, I'm okay with the color scheme. However, he does look a little bit thin in the neck department. Well, they've changed all that. They've actually got a one-piece neck piece where the cape and the neck are all connected and then the head kind of goes on top of that. And I think that that looks way, way better. Now, if we could only get them to change the blue to black. Like I said, I'm okay with the color scheme, but I'd be happier if it was the black with the purple on the inside of the cape and not the blue. I guess a customizer's work is never done. I predict Instagram is going to be filled with these guys all repainted. And another big change, the most notable big change, the one that everyone's talking about, is the Superman figure, which was first shown to us in his Rebirth, Rebirth costume, is now completely changed. 
He's got his trunks and his yellow belt back again because as of Action Comics issue 1000, he finds his trunks again. Maybe he pulls a box out from under his bed. Maybe his current Rebirth costume gets dis destroyed and he has to pull out the old one. And then he's like, yeah, cool, I'll keep wearing it. We don't. I don't really know how that exactly works, but the facts are Superman is going to have his trunks back, his iconic trunks. And not only does he have the trunks, but he's going to have the cuffs back again. So Action Comics 1000 actually brings in a completely new classic Superman suit. But that has a lot of people wondering, is there going to be two releases or just the one? I tend to think they're going to treat it just like they did the New 52 Superman figure that never was released that was supposed to be part of the original New 52 DC Icon 7 pack. He never saw retail. There's probably a prototype of him still somewhere in the offices at DC, but we will never have the ability to purchase him. I'm pretty sure, I'm just gonna call it, I'm gonna say that's likely what's gonna happen with Superman's Rebirth outfit. We're probably only gonna see Trunks Superman. Now Mattel had some really cool stuff to show as well. Not only did they have the current wave of DC multiverse action figures on display, and that's, that's typical. They're gonna bring out what is currently in stores to show people to bolster their display, but they also brought out the next wave. So you had the Luther Build-A-Figure wave that they brought out. I'm pretty sure they just showed the prototypes as well. I don't think we saw very many if any, of the actual store ready. I think the Bizarro figure was actually store ready, but I mean, you can look at some of the figures and tell that they're still in their prototype paint form. Either way, they brought those out, which was kind of cool to see them. And then they also showed us some figures that we hadn't yet seen. At least I hadn't seen yet. Spoiler, Harley Quinn, Beast Boy, Kid Flash, the Injustice 2 Superman figure. These are all figures that I'm definitely gonna buy and I'm really excited about. They all seem to have at least the current new form of DC Multiverse articulation, but I think it's important to note here that if you look at the Harley Quinn figure, you can see her foot off to the side, which to me implies that she may just have ankle pivots. It's possible. I'm going to hold out hope that she does. Now, as far as the DC Multiverse Signature Collection goes, we were hoping to see something new from them, and instead they brought up the Val Kilmer Batman and the John Wesley ship Flash, which we already know exist because they've already been released. But however, they did not bring out the Linda Carter Wonder Woman, not even the prototype. She did not make an appearance at all, and we didn't really see anything new from them. Yes, we did see a, a Batman Returns Danny DeVito Penguin prototype that they're working on, which looks fabulous, and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to pick him up as well because he looks great. But we were hoping to see something different, like maybe Brandon Roth, 89 Batman, Christopher Reeve, something. I know some of those characters, the licenses are difficult, like we'll probably never get a Jack Nicholson Joker because he charges way too much for his likeness. We didn't really see anything, though. Just Danny DeVito Penguin. He's great and all, but we wanted to see just a few more. Now, one thing that kind of flew into the radar was Mattel also showed us action figures from a Batman Evergreen line, where there's Harley Quinn and Joker and Tim Drake Robin, and it's going to be released in the stores primarily for kids, but these look pretty good, and I can see collectors actually getting interested in these and picking them up as well. Now on to Mezco. Some of the things that I saw from Mezco that I was particularly excited about, I took note of, was the John Stewart Green Lantern with two interchangeable heads. Some people, the buzz is there's not a whole lot of constructs, there's not a lot of things you can add to them, which is kind of sucky. Maybe on the second release, they'll release a few more constructs. He looks pretty good overall. I'm not that impressed with the look. I'm, I'm kind of, I, I see... These companies, they design these action figures and they change the look. Like Injustice changes the look. Mezco changes the look from the classic look. And see, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. With Flash and with Captain Marvel, sorry, Shazam, they kept their original look and they look fabulous. And Green Arrow looks great the way he is too. But with Superman, they just crapped the bed with his whole belt and outside briefs area. And Batman looks great, but I do want to point out that they haven't actually given us a classic suited Batman yet. Not counting Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns, that is very accurate to the comic. They tend to try and make their own style up. And that's what we see in their Rising Knight Batman, and also in their modern Batman, which they revealed at Toy Fair, and also in their Jon Stewart Green Lantern. All three of those have different costumes that you can tell are flavored by their original or actual costumes. However, they do a completely different take on them. 
Also, SH Figuarts brought out their Justice League movie figures and set up a display, and it looks fabulous. I'm really a big fan of what SH Figuarts is doing with those characters, the sculpts, the articulation. I really do like them. I'll likely pick up the entire league from SH Figuarts and, and make a display of it because on account of them being awesome and all. Now if statues is your thing, there are a ton of those that have been revealed this year as well. Between DC Collectibles and other companies, if you're a statue kind of person that doesn't collect the figures but has a house filled with DC statues, there is a ton of really cool stuff that was revealed. I myself, I'm not a statue guy because I can't afford to be. The statue game is a really expensive collector market to get into. I'm lucky that I can afford the few props that I have, but if I got into buying all the statues, I'd, I'd have my entire year's figure budget spent in like four or five statues. Gone. But if you're a statue fan, I encourage you to float on over to Toy Arc or Action Figure Insider and see what you can find in their galleries because there is some amazing stuff. But those are just the things that I was the most excited to see revealed at 2018's New York Toy Fair. All the DC products that I am the most excited about. There were a lot of non-DC products as well that looked very cool. Thundercats, He-Man, Ghostbusters. There's so much stuff that just looks so awesome at this year's Toy Fair. Leave it down in the comments below what things you're excited that you've seen at New York Toy Fair this year. It could be DC, it could be non-DC, just leave it down in the comments below because I read absolutely every single comment and I'm always happy to meet new faces as well. Also, if you like this video, please leave a like on it. That's the kind of thing that's going to help me out a lot. It's going to let me know that hopefully I'm doing something right on this channel. And if you want to see more of my sort of content show up in your inbox, well, just hit the subscribe button. And remember to ding the bell so that you never miss a video. And I'll see you in the next one. See you later, DC Squad. Have an awesome day.